Yeah. Himself. That's it. <laughs> How'd you go? Yeah, mate, yeah. Yeah, good weekend. Um, yeah, punched it out pretty good. So, yeah, yeah, just uh, full of energy every after, after every race, which is awesome. But um, Unreal. Yeah, no, I got the six-hour enduro done. So, yeah, flat out doing that. Are you doing a call with everyone or is it just Jordan? Yeah. No, I think it's everyone. Oh. Well, it's up. Is it just you two at the moment? It's just us two at the moment. Can I just quickly say my husband, for the first time in 11 years, did not pack any alcohol to go camping. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you? It fucking it. disables you. And do you know what else? After the six hour enduro, he's sitting there. We, what do we have? Was it pork belly or was it lamb cutlets? I don't know. It's something. It was either pork belly or lamb cutlets. Everyone was so interested every time we fucking ate that everyone had to have a bite. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's now convinced that Celtic salt is good and not just some hippie shit. Mm. everyone was into like the bone broth mayos and stuff and um yeah nick was pretty much your biggest influencer out there everyone was asking <laughs> all these questions <laughs> and everyone's like oh man you've done so good and mm. then after the six hour enduro like we were up at four everyone was fucking shagged and this idiot goes oh i just can't sit still i need to go for a five or ten k run yes <laughs> <laughs> new levels new yeah, levels. he had all this energy and he couldn't get it out he took his rings but we couldn't find a tree to hook them up in oh that's all right you you, you sounds like you've gone well and truly beyond previous years mate yeah man yeah 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 nah but as i say the car ran well like run flawlessly the whole weekend and to the last day so i um, yeah, i thought I'll, I'll send it on the last day and see how she goes and uh, it drives on one wheel, so one wheel still spins. So awesome! <laughs> <laughs> Time to repair. <laughs> oh man, I'm actually I'm so pumped for you this year to go through a season as a healthy individual and not bloody inflamed and yeah. alcohol ridden and, and yeah. battling battling all the symptoms and trying to drive for six hours. So mm-hmm. it's awesome. No, it really helped, man. That's for sure. Yeah. Good feedback. Good solid feedback. Yeah. How are you, Adam? Yeah. I'm going well, mate. Uh, just at the office today, so played a game of hockey last night, which was the first game uh, for a few uh, months. Uh, I'm a bit stiff and sore this morning. Uh, you just use different muscles, like it's yeah. uh, crazy. We got the wind. acceleration, deceleration, change of direction, mate. And I'm so slow now; like it's quite amazing. I think I need to, like, I don't know, just do some like sprint training or something like mm. even though I'm playing in my grade which is with guys same age as me um yeah I'm not very fast and actually when I was a player I was yeah, not the fastest on the team but I'd, I'd say I'd be in the top five and uh I think I'm just uh lacking a bit of uh flexibility or something or like yeah, yeah. well Put it this way, I, I've done a lot of endurance sports over the last 20 years and I've basically done no sprinting. So, mm. yeah, that'll do it to you. Train, train slow, be slow. Yeah. It's a, um, yeah, I mean, it, I, I can I can imagine the temptation to do sprint training and I can imagine the desire to be faster. I would recommend, however, range of strength yeah. before sprint work. Uh, just just build build the brakes before before you build the engine yeah so yeah all the all the range of strength stuff will be so beneficial for your hamstrings no? hamstrings hip flexors glute ankles knees yeah. and then once that foundation feels really c- capable then we can start putting some torque through those joints yeah the um one thing that i put in my thing there i having a lot of um like knee pain in my left knee when I do pistols and um I don't know about you but I actually think it's just like started from jumping into it without a proper warm-up yeah um and and I sort of like oh you know the first few sets hurt a bit and then it like warms up and then it's fine um but I think it just got inflamed from from doing that um 
and now like even if I do warm up like I can't even get into that position like it just sort of like the tendon or the yeah underneath like a bit the of, kneecap like a, like a little bit yeah. of inflammation there like it just kind of like throbbing yeah. like a little bit of sharp inflammation kind of like yeah pain and it's it's just at one part of the movement and then when you like you know if I'm to start right at the bottom and then I, I can drive up no worries but it's, as I'm going down yeah so it's the, load, it's the load on the it's the eccentric load on the tendon yeah so that's you, what I thought yeah, going to be best to get volume through your step ups. So lots of yep. step ups, and then range of strength sit ups or uh, regressed sissy squats to start giving it some uh, eccentric tolerance again. So let me put yeah. something together for you for that, uh, and that'll just sure. be a warm up. Yeah, because like yeah, actually the what is it? The concentric movement doesn't hurt at all. It's the eccentric movement that is, uh, um, yeah. <laughs> it's like, Oh fuck, what's going on here? Yeah. So that's um, the brakes. That's the brakes versus the accelerator, which is a clear yeah. indicator that the foundations are a bit shaky and it probably yeah. is because, because you've ramped up volume because you've gone pretty hard yeah. with the pistols. You've probably ramped up volume and then your knees have hit a capacity of tolerance. And so what you're yeah. finding is you're getting a little bit of tissue degeneration or, or breakup. And then that's leading yeah. to constant, uh, constant, I guess, symptom of inflammation on that eccentric loading. What's good about that is that if it's not a concentric pain, it's not yeah. a, it's not a, it's not a big injury. So we best to get onto it now yeah. while it's just a symptom before yeah. it becomes a concentric pain, which is a, like a, 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 a more of a breakdown. So Let's get, yeah, let's get yeah. that as soon as we can. Uh, I'll get that sorted for you. Um, looks like it might just be us two tonight. A few of the boys, I had a few boys sick. And then Simon's got clients over and Jeremy's doing a test. So, yeah, I just basically wanted to jump on and have a quick chat to you guys about check-in with around. I mean, very interesting that that was the topic of conversation, Nick, to start with, being in a social environment in a new frame of mind you know, taking a new identity, new perspectives on food, new disciplines, new outlook into a social environment that was passed in the previous somewhat challenging or somewhat a pressure on you to, I guess, exhibit poor behaviors and, and adopt poor behaviors. So yeah, tell, give me a little bit of insight around how your mind's now functioning going into those environments. Yeah, well, it, it's, you know, it's one of those things beforehand, like when my Navi always says, you know, go right or left, I'm going left instead of right, and that kind of jazz. So I'm just, my brain's all skew if. Um, like when I'm doing uh, other races and stuff like that, like the six hour enduro, I've never done one of them before. Uh, it was always a worry. I've done like a six hour, like a three hour and stuff like that, and been absolutely buggered in between doing, like getting the first hour, and I'm, I can barely even hold on anymore. I'm just, yeah, just kind of dying in the ass, sweating bullets kind of thing. So, yeah, I can kind of um, keep keep my uh, mindset focused on what I'm doing and you know, around the tracks. I knew it's a 40-kilometer loop we had to do and stuff like that. So I had to, um, you know, make sure yeah, everything's running correctly, like temperatures and stuff like that. Like I had, had myself set every five minutes looking down to see what's going on and, you um, know what gear I need to be in for each each run around kind of thing in each corner. And, um, yeah, I was not even breaking a sweat in the car at all. I was actually keeping my temperatures right down, like, beforehand. Like, I was always sweating like crazy, and now I'm not. So, um, so yeah, capacity, more focused. Capacity to perform is much higher. Mm. Yeah, attention, yeah. Attention to detail and, and, like, essential details in performance is also higher. Yep, yep. Yeah, not yeah, not um, you know, best thing was too because obviously you're going six hours. You know, sometimes you need to eat between then. Um, like in the morning, I think I had two bites of a steak and that was it because my my nerves nerves were just skyrocket high. Um, as soon as I got in the car, they went away and I wasn't hungry for the whole six hours. So yeah, I had to go to the toilet a few times, but yeah, but I wasn't hungry. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Awesome. You don't shit yourself in the car. No, no. So I, I um actually because obviously you know how um crook I was getting trying to um eat uh, drinking the um 
uh, apple cider vinegar. Um, I still wasn't hundred percent right getting to to the day I left, so I cut everything out. So all I was eating is just salt and steak. And that was it. And no added added extras like no bone broth. Um, having no coffees in the afternoon, like um de- decaf or nothing like that. Just kept it strict as, as shit. And uh, as soon as I got out there, I was fine. <laughs> That's a yeah. spit out, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was quite worried. <laughs> That's so good. And and in terms of the food in the environment, so how's your mindset changed? For instance, heading into this season, into those events, carrying food, eating certain foods versus previous years. Oh well, yeah. Well, this time was actually not too bad. Penny was with me, so you had the um the steaks, the lambs, the um pork belly all cooked and stuff ready to go. Um, like beforehand, I'll just be grabbing uh, whatever I can find. So I'd be chucking in lollies, chips, chips and dip, um, shapes and stuff like that. Sausage rolls, yeah. burgers. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Then the crazy slide, that, you know, that, it's crazy that, it's crazy that that's the food they serve up at sporting mm. environments, right? Like this is, these are the, these are like the environments where people are required to perform at their highest level and they're feeding them that shit. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. It's just, it's it's pretty wild. I, I think about it in sporting and, I think in sporting environments, but like there's just a huge, um, uh, what's, what's the word? Um, tendency to let off steam, you know? Eat junk, drink apes, um, and... Like uh, on a trip, and uh, and then like on the last night, everyone wants to eat McDonald's and uh, and shit (laughs) and drink heaps of beers. Exactly. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. It's. I guess it's. I kind of understand it because it's it's like the all in, all or nothing mentality, right? Like athletes are very. I'm all in, super, super focused, hyper focused on the result. And then you get the result and you're like, right, I'm switching right off. Unfortunately, I think it's to the detriment though, you know, like you look at like the best of the best and they didn't, they don't think like that. Like I, Kobe's, Kobe's well known for it. LeBron's known for it. Like they don't, they don't switch off. You know, like like I've heard yeah. Kobe, like there's interviews about Kobe talking about his diet, and it's like he's like, I don't see cheat meals as a benefit to who I am as an athlete. I mm. don't see drinking as a benefit to me being the greatest. Mm. So it it is. It, I mean, you would see this, Adam. It's such a slippery slope for athletes because they go so hard, and then they, what do you think they de- they feel like they deserve to just blow off steam or the pressure or the pressure within the season maybe needs to be released. Mm. Yeah. You just see it uh, with, with a lot of athletes and professional sports and, and it's probably why, you know, when they finish their careers, they have so much trouble. Um, some do really well and they, they like set themselves up to be successful in their next phase of their life. But others, uh, 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 um, you know, and they say like, you know, I've worked master all my life now. I, I deserve to have a break for a few months, but then it is a slippery slope. You know, you just you get into bad habits, and that's your that's your life. I've said a lot actually, and a lot of top athletes end up with mental health issues because of it. Mm. I guess a lot of people, just even in general, the general population, have that similar mentality but possibly even applied to the week and the weekend you know it's like it's within a seven day time frame not a seasonal time frame it's like oh i've eaten good for the week now i can eat whatever i fucking want on the weekend oh that's a classic isn't it like you know at home all week and then you start friday night having a few beers and restaurant meal and then saturday night is saturday like it's the weekend so you have to do it and then Sunday you're hungover, so you eat shit. So mm. then three days of the week, 
out of seven, you've eaten shit. And I, I've seen it with athletes before that can't lose weight, in particular female athletes. They do pretty well till Thursday. Friday's the last day of training. They go out for dinner Friday night. Saturday's a day off. They eat junk on Saturday to reward themselves. And uh, Sunday is uh, also maybe they might do something like in the morning and eat shit. And then they wonder why they can't make any inroads into their body composition. Mm. And it's three days out of seven. And you you just can't, even if you eat well the four days, those three days outweigh it, you know, mm. literally. Yeah. From a caloric output for sure or input for sure. It's, yeah. um, we just, we just went on a date night. Nick and I just had a date night tonight. We went and watched the new June movie. And, uh, uh yeah. Yeah, it was, was it good? Yeah. It's a, one. Oh, look, it's a ripper movie, ripper movie, epic series. Got a little bit lost in the religious theme. I believe this one, they, they uh, went yeah. really hard with like the chosen one and Messiah and the prophecy. And, uh, while I, I, I somewhat love that story, like for instance, like the star Wars story and whatever, uh, it was very religious. Yeah. Um, I personally have come out of religion as a, as a child yeah. and have my own views on it. But look, the cinematography, the action, it's it's more gory than the first one. There's like heaps of heaps of action, heaps of <laughs> heaps of killing, heaps of murder. Yeah, brutal. Cool. Um, but yeah, we went we we're, we're sitting down and cool. like we, we took we took pre pre cooked sausages, um, some burger patties, took some goat's cheese, took you know our own a bit of fish from last night. Um, and like ate in the cinema, our, had our own food. It was so interesting. Like even after eating that food, I had this like, maybe it was like a 5%, 5 to 10% like urge within me, like go and get some popcorn, go and get, you know, go and get a, a sl- frozen Coke because it's like the environment has this neural pattern, this neural pathway of, oh, you're at the movies. So you eat Slurpee and a thing of popcorn. And my body had to be aware of it. It's like, just because you're at the movies doesn't mean you have to buy a fucking box of popcorn and a Slurpee. Like you don't, you don't actually need it. You're just eating dinner. And it's so interesting to be able to have that awareness. I think that's one of the biggest growths you can have is, is if you can catch yourself in thoughts that you don't want to continue, you've got the, a chance to then make a choice. And if you can make the choice, then you get momentum and you gain more power over that awareness every time you, you reach it, right? I just lost you there, guys, but I, I was switching networks because my internet was shit. Did you hear me, Nick? Yeah, so it's like the neural pathway where we are all just built up of neural millions of neural pathways. And it's like when we go into these environments, we're going to be stimulated or we may activate previous neural pathways that drive us towards certain <laughs> urges or decisions but if we can become aware of it, so for instance, like Nick heading into those environments, like a race weekend where people are drinking piss and eating like shit, you can just pre-frame it and be like, I know I'm going into this environment. There's going to, there, there is going to be that temptation. There's going to be people around <coughs> beers or with shitty food, but I'm going to catch myself, have the awareness, make better choices and build momentum towards the thing that I actually want. Yeah, it was very hard because I had that, Costco sized lollies and um, yeah, it was very hard to not go past and just grab a big scoop in my hand. <laughs> yeah. And it's the, it's yeah. the easy option hey, to just go, Oh fuck it. I'll have some. Yeah. Yeah. They're so well, good. They well, taste done. So good. well done for not. <laughs> Cass, how are you brother? You're driving. I'm like, yeah. I mean, I love- I lost you guys on me. You're good. You're good. I was just just saying good day. We're having some internet troubles. Yeah, no, just uh, in the best. Uh, I'm the worst part here, best in front of the of the, the airport. Yeah, the internet's pretty really bad. Uh, I'll be I'll be with you guys in two minutes. I just passed this area. Otherwise, they're gonna be blocking the conversation. Yeah, all good. 
So with the with day to day, Nick, what is there anything? Yeah. Do you feel like you've got full control over your mind now? Like do you feel like you've got there where you're pretty well dialed in? Pretty much, mate. Yeah, yeah. So um, it's just the uh, the what I'm going to have each day. I kind of toss between do I have sausages or pork belly or um, you know tea bones or bit of nice bit of beef kind of thing. Um, yeah, just it, that, that's what get that's what gets me. The only thing now is what I'm going to have because it's I'm not bored from it. I still taste good. I love it. But um, yeah, it's just basically. Um, so I, I usually I'll I'll fall to pork belly for um, lunch at work. And then at home, I'll have a um, like a nice steak or um, my lamb loin chops. I love my chops, so they're yeah, my so, they're my go to. And so, if, if if you were to give yourself advice on the journey that you've gone on with food and being in control in environments and the discipline and the choices, what would you tell yourself a year ago? Oh, bloody pull your head in, get in. <laughs> It's just, it's just that simple. Like, yeah, uh, the road I was going down, is, it was no good. Like, even, um, you know, we have a lot of people saying that me and Penny now, they just seem completely different people because we're just so happy and stuff like that and full of energy because, you know, I'm, I'm you know, it, always, it takes one person to pull the other, other three people down in the family, you know what I mean? So, yeah, if you're, you're happy, everyone else around you will be happy as well. So, yeah. But, um, yeah, say, that's what I love. Say- Happy wife, happy happy life, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, what, about, that's what about when dad's fucking no good? Everyone's oh, tre- treading on eggshells. Just a blowjob, mate. Be fine. <laughs> <laughs> but, will, but will you? Will you? Yeah, nah, nah. <laughs> <laughs> you uh, right. Everyone knows that's not getting rid of your problems. Yeah. Maybe a night with Jennifer Anderson. We'll see. I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm with you on that one she's actually it's, it's, it's there for the it's, it's there for the time being <laughs> <laughs> no but that's yeah. sorry guys I got the I was driving a bad day internet there and I fully signed up about the, what you guys are saying or what George was saying about momentum if you enter a good momentum you just get you pass that phase where you wanna you still get attracted to that with that you know that it's like the popcorn and the cinema it's, too, it's always gonna be there because it's programmed is that the way it's been built the system for a long time now but i reckon the percentages of wanting and craving it goes down and down like jordan just said that he has like a five percent i think he say of want to have it but at the beginning when you you just stop eating that kind of thing and you're getting out of that type of like a uh, bad flow, bad momentum, you, you like, you go to the cinema and you're like at 95% look at it. Uh, you want the popcorn, right? So that's one example that is a fine to go to a, to a place, to a party place. There's no way that's not going to have a drink, right? That, that's for us. So it's in your mind that, and then at some point, we've been doing that for so long, it's just so good without it. That you are saying the other way. You just like maybe when, after doing fifteen uh, weddings of good friends, you're gonna have uh, a glass of uh, wine or so, you know, and you start to switch to the other side, and and then everyone sees the difference, and then everyone sees the difference. Everyone asks you what's going on, and you feel good about it. You feel good that people say, "Man, it looks good. Fuck, the family's happy," and you know. And then you start feeding that internal voice that's like, I'm, do- I'm doing good, I'm doing good for me, I'm doing good for my family, and then you know, sure. well, you got the good Yeah, definitely. It, it's so much about that awareness that leads into momentum, consistency, intensity, the evolution of self, right? It's like, we need to have the awareness first. If we're not around an accountability group and we're not around new stimulus and new perspectives and new ways of thinking, the awareness piece is lacking. Once we get the awareness piece, we need to make better choices. Once we make better choices, we start to get momentum. Once we've got momentum, we want to keep the consistency. From consistency, if we then apply intensity, we may actually break through that barrier and create a whole new evolution. 
So it's it's such a it's such a cool journey to go on for your, your own self. Like it's, I, I do believe that's that's the key to ever to evolving yourself is you have to go through each of those steps. You have to face that ninety five percent urge to have a drink or to have a burger or to have you know you've got to you've got to face the the adversity of the neural patterns that are so heavily ingrained and reprogram yourself so that eventually you've put enough reps in to actually lead with new decisions. Yeah, hundred percent. And you know what? With uh, over time, you see that it's not that hard. Like you say, you took the burger pad and it's kind of thing. Uh, we went on the weekend to a big uh, kids park here and then that, you know, fries and burgers and crap lord is all flying around i just went to the lady that does the work on the you know the on the on the coffee place i said look can i have just the burger pad and then ask for a few other stuff everything i clean i just clean up i took off the crap and i took it just what uh, was important and I, I got to the table and then people was like what is that to you is it i was like the, the meat from the burger i was like but how how did you get it? I was like, you asked for, right? Uh, I was like, ah, but no bread. And then they tried the meat by itself. Like the meat is actually really good. It's bread is crap. Like yeah, but I mean, it's always like yeah, the, the the meat is always the best. And um, so yeah, there is ways around. If you go in and talk with people, people are great. Like uh, you can always get just what you what you want. The king of sides. <laughs> Yeah, king of the the king of the sides menu. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. No, no, there is, there is ways around. It's just gotta be like you say, aware, and then from awareness, with the discipline, you go and you keep doing your journey wherever you are. From a spiral standpoint, Adam, where do you think yeah. when you when you're stuck in those neural pathways, like for instance? someone struggling to think about going into social environments and having to like say no to other people or having to say no to maybe offend other people or whatever. Is that like, it's a low level of operation, right? It's a low level of vibration or a low level of thinking. Yeah. So the way I look at that is um, yeah, what do people prioritize uh, or what do they value um, as a priority and what do they least value as a priority so some people are really value uh, being part of a family or a group or being part of something and being welcomed um, that's in purple or in uh, green um, and they value those personal relationships highly so for them it's really difficult to um, reject that to say like yeah I'm not going to have a drink I'm not going to feel part of the group because I'm um, that's really important to me. Now, the way that I, I work with people that are, you know, athletes or people that I work with around this is around um, working on your weaknesses. So things that maybe that you're not so good at and that they make you feel uncomfortable in the beginning. If you dive in and you just say like, no, I'm going to do like this, you know, you don't even have to say no. Oh, look, today I'm not going to take a drink because I've got to get up early in the morning or whatever. Make it, make an excuse to start with. That might be an easy way to to get into it. And then you build in where people are like, they don't even offer. Like I've got a mate that's like, he, he's a, he's a crazy uh, endurance guy. Like he just, he rides like for two hours a day and um, he, but but then on weekends he'll go for a five six hour ride. But he runs twenty five kilometers every every Friday. Like he that's and he goes, it's just my way of life. I go, what are you training for? I'm not training for anything. I just love doing it, doing <laughs> by myself. And like you know, but if he, I think he could qualify for worlds in Ironman if he, like he missed by one minute one year. He did it, and I said like, are you going for it now? He goes like, I've no, no, I've no desire. I'm just doing it. But when we go out, like he will have a beer every now and then, like when we're in a social setting. Um, but usually people don't offer him a beer anymore because like he's not like into that. But in the beginning, like he was like, yeah, no, I'm not like, no, I got, I'm got a big ride tomorrow. So I'm not going to do it. And so he sort of built into it. Um, and, but from a spiral perspective, 
those people that really want to feel part of something or be in in a team or or harmony or feelings or togetherness, they will really struggle um, because they they struggle actually being their own person. They want to Outcast. be part of the yeah. They want to be part of the group, mm. uh, and you know that's probably something you know that 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 I've struggled with in the past. You know, I don't know if you guys have ever had it where. Yeah, my mum had a, a saying, what will other people think of you? Um, she used to say, yeah, don't do that. What will other people think of you? And and so like this like feeling of like want, you know, that other people think good of me has like haunted me like my whole life. Um, so, you know, you if somebody like doesn't like you or you know, you have a conflict with someone, you want to make it right. And like, so it's been like this thing that sort of, yeah, I've struggled with my whole life. And then that comes to also like acceptance in a social setting also, like mm-hmm. being shunned or or, or whatever. Um, so reflect on how I coach and how I work with people. It's like, okay, what are the areas that you're not comfortable in? Can you dive into that and keep doing it until the start part where you feel comfortable? And I use an example. I started snow skiing last year, never done it in my life. Um, you get on a blue slope is easy, like the beginner over here, then you've got red and then you got black. So the first time on a red slope, I was like, I thought I was going to die. I was super uncomfortable. And um, it would be very easy to say, I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm just going to do the blue slopes because that I don't like and this I like. But by the end of the trip, I could do the red quite easily and I felt completely comfortable because I pushed through it. Um, and so it's not like this, you, you feel uncomfortable. Oh, no, I go back. Feel uncomfortable? No, I go back. And in life and in mindset development, people do that all the time. It's easier just to take a beer than to say no. Because mm. otherwise you have like this social stigma. So they just say like, they just don't do it. Yeah, I've always done it this way and I don't want to dive in to to that. Like last night after the game, I think the boys hadn't seen each other for three months and I just was seeing messages like, we finished at 10, they were like still messaging at 2 a.m. And everyone got blind after the game. I just took a like a, a water and I sat there for a while, had a good chat and then I said, I've got an early start, I'm going to go. No one said anything. It was actually really good. But in the past, I would have been the first, the guy getting the tray of the beers, you know, yeah. the boys, you know, to feel accepted. Yeah. And it's interesting, you your journey specifically, you know, you said that at the start, you were struggling with what the team thought of you and, you know, how you yeah. were perceived on like a fucking crash diet or something like, but now you've felt yeah. the results. Now you've felt the change in your energy and the control of your satiation and all that stuff what is it now that like, like do you care about how they perceive you still or are you com- more confident in your decisions for yourself and your family? I think, I think it's the more confident part because, um, and also like the feedback, like um, one of the guys in, in our team, he's one best player in the world, like five years, uh, five times. And um, oh, he's a gun and his uh, girlfriend works for us. And uh, my wife said like, um, Oh yeah, Kim like said that uh, Arthur was like super impressed with how you're going with your training and your diet and uh, that type of stuff, and and he was like, like yeah, really impressed with how you're going. You could do stuff in the gym that he can't do, and yeah. I was like, oh fuck, like because that's someone like you care about, like what they think, yeah, you know. Um, whereas if it's like some, you know, let's say, you know muppet in the in you know or some beginner or or a dude that's you know just trying to make you feel bad or whatever then um yeah so i thought that you know that via via feedback gives you like the confidence to okay you're on the right track and i think i said to you as well like you know went out to dinner with some people the other week and then they were just asking like yeah what have you done and i said like i'm just doing this and I, and I like it. Oh yeah. And I said, like, it's, it's literally 20 to 30 minutes a day. And if you don't have that much time, you do like 
you put them all together, which half the time I do that, it's 10, 15 minutes. It's hard. Like you got to sweat up at the end of it, but um, that's what I'm doing. And I'm um, like, just this is what I'm eating. I actually like more, maybe like ancestral, like I'm doing yeah, carnivore with some vegetables. Um, but I don't eat potato or anything like that, but, yeah. You know, that with salad or whatever, but predominantly carnivore. My wife is the one that gives me the most shit. She's like, are you going to die of a fucking heart attack, all that red meat? <laughs> yeah. You just, just show her the statistics. I'll, I'll, I can show you. I can send you the real research if you want, not the shit from the WHO, but the real stuff. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, low low nah, low, cholesterol, um, low low cholesterol is actually proven for more mortality than high cholesterol. So, really? Yeah, yeah. If you've got low cholesterol, the mortality rate is like thirty percent more in elderly people because the hormones tank, the body degenerates, tissues you get weak. You know, it's yeah. ridiculous. And and the the clotting of the arteries, like that's what everyone freaks out about, like the blood clots and the heart attacks. It's not actually from fat. It's from fat and sugar. And when there's oxidized sugar and, you know, seed oils and all this stuff, it actually creates massive blockages with protein and fat. So like a lot of the research is showing like it's probably best that we reduce our sugar intake and we reduce our processed food intake and we reduce our oxidized fat lipids, which is seed oils and flat, mm -hmm. you know, all this stuff because that is actually what influences all the heart problems more so than the saturated fat. It's just that we've been mm -hmm. told we've been told that saturated fat's the problem, but they brought in a heap of sugar and then heart attacks went through the roof and they blamed it on fat. And you're like, hold on, people are eating sixty percent more sugar than they've ever eaten before. Why are we not looking at processed sugar? <laughs> mm -hmm. Very yeah, exactly. And it's actually no, I think it's cutting a, out processed foods has been like the the biggest one, and mm. not that I ate a lot of processed foods like at all. Um, not not I'm just not really into it. I'm not really a sugar guy, um, but um, yeah, just making a bit more of an effort to have whole foods. I follow that um, pure body team guys. I don't know if you know them. They're in Bondi. Oh um, yeah, 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 yeah. Alaska. Alfie, Alaska Alfie. boy, and that yeah, Alfie, Alfie. yeah, yeah, Alfie, and yeah, they they they, they show their the plates, body. they show their plates, and uh, um, like they, yeah, like that. That was something I was thinking about for you, like the the diet and what you eat. I enjoyed when you post that before to show like that type of stuff. It gives you inspiration to uh, eat well because mm. it looks tasty, you know. Yeah, those guys. Those guys are fucking. When you train like three hours a day, then you can look like that. And they're twenty-one. Exactly. So <laughs> the just through the roof. I was hanging out with them in Bali. I trained with them a few times. Right. And uh, yeah, they're just young guns. Like they're just young, full of cum, fucking testosterone, yeah. <laughs> through, training hours a day. Like they, they've got no right to be anything but cut with what they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> So. Like you, this is this is my day. Get up at five, run for half an hour, then do some mobility, then do some strength, then do this, then do this, then finish with a high intensity workout. I'm yeah. like, wow. Yeah. yeah, no, it's pretty cool. I mean, they've built they've built their whole personal brand around being able to do that. So it's epic. It's uh, yeah, yeah. epic. But yeah, no, like it's so simple. It is really so simple. Whole foods, like. Eat, eat like our ancestors. I was thinking about, I don't know if you guys saw the story I put up the other day, but I was like, some fucking brainiac has gone out there, hunted the food for you and put it in a fresh food store. All you have to do is go and gather it. You don't even have to hunt anymore. <laughs> you just yeah, yeah, yeah. Get your fish, get your beef, get your chicken, get whatever you want, lamb, get a few fruits and veggies if you need to and eat. That is it's that simple. So many yeah. people are like, fuck, that's so funny. I've never thought about it like that. I'm like, yeah, literally, we're still hunter gatherers. It just depends on what you're gathering. You know, mm. are you gathering mm. dog shit or are you gathering proper food? Yep. Yeah. yeah, very good. All right. Little chat 
about training quickly. How's everyone's training going, Adam? Obviously, by the sounds of it, we need some a little bit of knee rehab in there or prehab work. Yep. You uh, <laughs> had your recovery go after the weekend. You ready to rip back in? Is that you? Yeah. Are you talking, are you talking to me then? Were you sorry? Yeah. The the yeah. other the other Nick flag it flying again. Oh, the other Nick. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um. <laughs> Look, yeah, I'm not too sure at this stage if I'm going to be able to uh, find time to be working out, but I'm definitely going to try, mate. i got a house inspection coming up this week, and um, I need to know how much money I need to throw at the car to fix it. So I've been stripping it down and finding all the broken parts that i got to pull out. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, then I've got to pull an auto. They've got to take the auto out because it's uh, I've lost third and fourth gear. So, yeah, my Saturday is going to be flat out. Sunday I'll be um, at the Brisbane show. Um and yeah, through this week I've got to clean the house up and make it all pretty. Can you manage ten minutes a day? Probably can, man, because that's what I've been doing. So basically, I've been doing my <clears throat> four to five k run, um, and then coming home and doing ten minutes workout. So I'll try and squeeze in um three different workouts um within one minute. Yeah, and then I'll have like a twenty second breather. I'll keep going, so I'll be sweating like a like a pig and stuff like that. But try and breathe through my nose at the same time while I'm doing my workouts, as well as obviously my running. Yeah, so just do those comp- those compressed sessions, and like this <laughs> is where you just got to be intuitive about it. Like if it's literally going to put you on the back burner to do a thirty to forty minute session because you got responsibilities to do, you just mm. need it in ten minutes. You know, you, you yeah find the two or three exercises, reduce the reps, crack it out. And in 10 minutes, you've had really good stimulus. You recover quick for the next day so you can go again. Like you're not absolutely cooking yourself. Yep. And that it's like such a simple way of just keeping consistent, you know, and yep. you've through yep. periods where you need to just hit that 10 minutes because you just need to get it done. And then you'll come into phases where you're like, fuck, I've actually got half an hour to really enjoy my training. And, you know, I, I've, I, for instance, I got, I tweaked my back on Thursday. So, I've literally just been tw- doing 20 minutes of stretching. Well, I did 20 minutes of stretching Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And I was just stretching my piriformis, stretching my hips, loosening up my spine, and just mm. freed it all up because it all jammed up a bit. And um, yeah, four days of just commitment to mobility. And I was back touching my toes, no pain. Like it was just a bit of a, uh, <clears throat> just a bit of a freak out. M- muscle spasm in the back locked up a bit, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll get the um, I get sore back from um, uh, what is it, knee to chest kind of thing. Yeah, uh, I've been getting that. I, it's not as bad now, but yeah, before like I was yeah doing it, I was taking a penny and I was like, this this is starting to really hurt my back. Uh, I thought it was from the running, but it was actually from the uh, knee to chest because obviously I was stretching the whole body out and then pulling my my legs up. So is it like a shooting pain in your lower back. Um, uh, no, just like a just like a pressure thing. Okay. Yeah. Uh, is it on the way down? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. So what that's telling me is that your, your inner core unit, because when you lift your knees, your, your core activates to, to yep. flex your abs. But then when you're coming down, you're probably coming a bit too fast and you yep. haven't got the control in the core. So it's all coming in through the back. Yeah. So right. The muscles are having to like grab to, to decelerate. So yep. if you feel that again, you can come up fast so you can rip the knees up and then really slow down and make sure your abs are super tight. So your core yep. is supporting that whole spinal movement and you're not gotcha. kind of ripping into that that eccentric load or the or the yep. break, the, the down phase. Okay, fantastic. I'll do that, yeah. But um, yeah, like as I say, I do ice baths every single day as well, so three minutes a day, but I've even got three friends doing ice baths now too, so um, yeah, if you're asking me about it all. I um, mean, my salesman today, because apparently you, if you are, I'm, I'm a bit slow at times, but you've done a written a, a written a book or something like that. You got a book out, is that right? I've got a book out. Yeah, I've got it. We just launched an ebook. The, an the ebook, that's the one. We just launched yeah. the family, the family food one. So we got all the yeah. meals that we eat in the family food one. Yeah, uh, but I have done a. I I do have a free ebook on my Instagram, which is like the five things that I'd do for free if I was unhealthy. Mm. It does involve cold water in there. Yeah, he was saying his bonds, he, he brought a book or something like that, like a, yeah, yeah, that he's going to read. Probably the five free ones. It's like 
Um, it's like mindset, cold water, hydration, whole foods, and then gratitude, I think. Yep. It's like the five five things I thought, you know, is, is free to anyone. You don't have to have hmm. a membership. You don't have to do anything. You just get in a cold shower, work on your mind, work on your body. Yep. Yeah. Awesome, fellas. Very yeah. good. Well, awesome to chat. Great, great, uh, great conversation. Always enjoy talking with you guys and seeing where your minds are at with it all. And, you know, it's really, uh, it's always beneficial just to hear, to see the growth, to see the awareness, you know, the new choices that are coming through the results, for instance, like Adam, you get the results, the comments from, you know, the guys and getting feedback and then also feeling it in yourself. And then with Nick, you know, being able to navigate competition in a whole new frame of mind and a new perspective, it's, it's epic. So, mm. uh, yeah, well, the, the yeah, biggest awesome, thing, oh, yeah, like the biggest thing I had as well is, um, you know, I, I don't like taking my shirt off in front of people and stuff like that and showing my man titties off. But, um, yeah, like even with racing here, cause I, I have to wear a race suit and stuff like that. So yeah, number one thing is not to wear a shirt under the race suit cause you sweat too much. So I'll be in the middle of the public and stuff like that with no shirt on and putting my suit on kind of thing. And yeah, it doesn't even, I don't even think twice going, Oh geez, I've got to hide myself behind my door or something like that. So no one can see me, but yeah, I'm just out for the world to see and not caring kind of thing, you know, so I've completely changed and that sort of thing. That's so good. Cause I, I remember that feeling as a, as a fat fatty. <laughs> it was <laughs> fucked. I hated it. I, I was nervous around women. I was nervous around other guys. Like, fuck, what do these guys think of me? You know, I was nervous I, I, in myself. I wasn't confident because I had those insecurities. And now I'm just like, like, I don't care that I'm not like cut like a diamond, but I'm like, I'm healthy. I don't really care what anyone else thinks of me. I'm confident in myself. Like it just, you just bring a different aura about yourself, a different identity about yourself when you are confident in yourself. So that's, I know how meaningful it is to be in those environments and just be able mm. to be yourself as well. I think Fortunate. it's a big one, isn't it? And like Nick, you've done a pretty fucking awesome job. Like the before and after is, how much have you lost, mate? Like 15? Uh, tw 26, 26 kilos now. 26 kilos. Yeah, I'm 90. I'm away uh, 79 kilos now. Jesus. Yeah. Now, a bit yeah. of a way to go. I'm down yeah. eight. Uh, so I am. Um, six, 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 uh, six months in. Hey, hey how long uh, took you and Nick to lose all of that? Uh, six months. Wow. That's yeah. impressive. That's dedication. Yeah, discipline, mate. Discipline. <laughs> in, yeah, in saying that, like, he has been the perfect, like, the perfect person to train because he just does everything to a T. And and I know she's listening, so I'll say thank you, Penny, also to being a massive support <laughs> on the food system. You know, like having a supportive partner is also a massive win for Nick because he's been he's had support at home. But like he, they've just done everything to a T. You know, and it's it. I feel like that's the thing. It's we can all get so distracted with will it work for me, but it's like, have you done every single thing to a T, and really give it a red hot crack? And like that's what happens when you know guys get after it. I'm I'm proud of you, Nick, because it's yeah, your 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 before and afters are yeah. truly inspiring. You know, a picture tells more than a thousand words. Uh, it blows me away. <laughs> hey, it's awesome. Yeah, yeah. No, thanks, guys. Yeah. Epic, epic, and you know we've all got all got new levels, and every level has a new devil. You know? Nick's next level is adding mass, adding muscle mass. So that's it. Yeah, let's get yeah, up. Nah. get into Those it. Love handles are going down. So I got my love handles starting to go away now. So I'm pretty stoked about that. So yeah, like everything's starting to slowly, slowly tighten up. So just keep on. I'm just gonna keep on running and uh, keep working out and choose my foods correctly, and I should be fine. Yeah. Clear that, yeah. clear that uh, intestinal fat, the visceral fat around the organs, the, the, mm. the trim up pretty quick with that reduction of inflammation. Epic, fellas. Love it. Love it. Mm. Big inspiration. Right. Let's after another week. Chat to you next week. And uh, yeah, I'll speak to you in the chat. Look Easy. See you training this week. Phew. All right, man. Catch us. Catch you guys. Catch you guys. Yeah.